Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to day two of our uh, lesson four journeys lesson. So we're going to get started right now. So we read a wonderful story yesterday and we have another wonderful story for uh, for you today. So right now we're just going to start off with our daily uh, phonemic awareness, which is beginning sounds. So I want you to listen to these two words and let's see if they have the same sound. Sun, sad, sun, sad. Do they both, do both words have the same beginning sound? Who could say out loud the beginning sound? S, s. And what letter is that? If you said S, you are correct. So let's look at each box right here. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at each box and we're gonna see if they both match. And by match, I mean having the same beginning sound. So we have a hen and a hat. Do those two pictures have the same sound? Yes, they do. They both have the same beginning sound. So I'm going to add a check right there. Now we have a vet, v -v vet, who is an animal doctor, and we have the number s -s six. Do vet and s -s six have the same beginning sound? No, they do not have the same beginning sound. Vet starts with a v and six starts with a s. Okay, so now we have a fox, a f -f fox and a f -f fan. Does fox f and f -f fan, do they have the same beginning sound? Yes, they do, boys and girls. So I'm going to add my check right there. Very good. And last but not least, we have a mop and a mat. Mop, mat. Do those two pictures have the same beginning sound? Mop, mat. Yes, they do. They both have a m sound. So I'm going to check that off as well. Very good. Okay, moving on. Okay, so for our daily vocabulary, vo vocabulary, yesterday we did our first three vocabulary words, and today we're doing our second three vocabulary words. So as you can see, they are different from the ones we did on Monday. So first, the first word we have is dough. We learned a little bit about dough when we read Pizza at Sally's. So this one, it gives you a definition of what dough is. So dough is flour, yeast, and water mixed together. Okay, so flour, yeast, and water mixed all together, right? And the next one, the next word is perfect. Okay, so this word right here is perfect. It means just right, perfect, just right. So when we say something is perfect, we say that it's just right. And the reason why I added the number 100% uh, is because when you get a perfect score on a test, you get 100. So that's why I added the picture of 100. And the last one, you'll see some dough on the bottom, but this dough is stretchy. And our vocabulary word is stretchy, which means able to be pulled out like rubber. Okay, so everybody go like that with your hands. Stretch it out. Very good. One more time and stretch it out. Excellent. Okay, so we, uh, we've we been talking about, in the last couple of weeks, we talked about nouns and other things like that. So today and this week, we're going to be talking about, for grammar, we're going to be talking about action verbs in the present tense. When I say present tense, it means it's happening right now. So some actions. What am I doing, boys and girls? If you said moving or jumping, you're correct. And that is an action verb. I was jump, I'm jumping. That means I'm doing it right now. Okay. What about this? Right now, I'm, eh, let me give you a chance to figure it out. What am I doing? With prompting. If you said reading, you're correct. I'm also doing that right now. Okay. So a, a verb is any type of action. So waving, I'm doing it right now. Waving. Waving is an action verb. Okay, so let's look at page 12 right here for uh, Pizza at Sally's. And it says, there are some actions that she does. There are some action verbs that she's doing in her book. So it says, measure and mix with water and yeast. Measure. So measuring, that is a, a an action verb, right? It, that's something that you do. And finally, mixing. Mix. Okay, 
that is an action verb, right? And if I say right now, I'm mixing, that's present tense. That's happening right now. So some of the verbs we went over today are reading, jumping, measuring, mixing. Okay, so those are some of the verbs that we went over, and we will go over them later on in the week. Good job. Okay, so now we are going to get into our brand new story. So our new story today is called Everybody Works, and we're going to focus on some target skills, target strategies, and talk about the genre as well. So our target skill is text and graphic features. So I know that when I read a book, when I read the words on a page, sometimes it doesn't give me a lot of information. But when I take a look at the pictures, the pictures give me more information than what the words are at the bottom of my page. So that's my target skill. And I want you to pay attention to that. When we read the words and you look at the pictures, you're going to see that the pictures have so much information for us, whereas the words on the bottom, it might not be as much information. Okay, so our target strategy is to analyze and evaluate. So when I read, I like to think about what the author is trying to tell me. I also like to think about why things in the book are there. This helps me to understand what I'm reading. So in the case of this book, we're going to skip ahead a little bit right here where it says informational text. I know that the author's purpose and the reason for the author writing this book is to give me information and to back up the the title, the title is Everybody Works. So the author wrote that book to show me different ways that everybody works. Okay, so when we get to the book, we are going to discuss the title, the author, and the illustrator. And remember, the genre is informational text. So this is a nonfiction book. Nonfiction means it's real. It tells the truth. It gives us facts and information. You will see that this book definitely gives us facts and information. Whereas yesterday's book was realistic fiction, Today's book is nonfiction informational text. So you might learn a thing or two. Okay, so now I'm going to click the link for the big book and we are going to read that story together. And I'm back and the story will load in just a moment. Okay, so obviously the story, like I mentioned before, is called Everybody Works. And it's pretty obvious to me just by looking at the cover right there, I see a firefighter. So I see the firefighter and I wonder what other kind of workers we're going to run into in this read aloud. So it's good to think out loud sometimes and really wonder what we think the story is going to be about. So this story was uh, has two authors. And remember, an author is the person that writes the story. So the two authors are Shelley Ratner and Ken Chrysler. And uh, the photographs in this story were also taken by Shelley Ratner. So Shelley Ratner was the author, she wrote it, and the photographer, she took pictures. Or in our case, we take pictures like this with our camera phones now, but she took pictures for the story. So she uh, did both. And a lot of times the author, like uh, at Pizza at Sally's, the author and illustrator was the same person. Okay, so let's get right into it. And before we get started, I want everybody to put their thinking caps on, put them on. And we're going to get ready to rock and roll. Okay, so here we go. Uh, a lot, oh, oh, another thing I wanted to mention. In a lot of nonfiction books, there is a table of contents which tells us where to find things. Okay, so now we'll get into the story. Everybody works in different ways. Okay, everybody works in different ways. So we can see right here, there's a man. He's selling fruit. Okay, we see a sailor standing in line on a ship. We see a doctor looking into the mouth of her patient. We also see uh, two sanitation workers in front of a garbage truck. And we also see a daycare worker pushing babies in a special two-seater stroller, right? So everybody works in different ways. Every job here is different, okay? And one thing I want you to pay attention to also when I'm reading, how I'm reading like I'm speaking, right? So I read like I speak. So basically when I'm reading, you never hear me read like this, work, is caring and protecting. No, I'm going to read like I speak. Work is caring and protecting. Okay. And remember, when there's a period at the end of the word, you have to stop a little bit. Okay. It's kind of like a mini stop sign. So it says work is caring and protecting. And you can see in all these pictures, they show some form of caring and protecting. Okay. So who could tell me one job that you see 
on this page that shows somebody who is caring for somebody else. Very good. So if you said a firefighter, you're correct. A police officer, you're correct. A veterinarian, which is an animal doctor, you're correct. A regular doctor taking care of a patient. And finally, a mother reading a book to her child. All of these are correct. Their work is caring and protecting. Okay, so this work, this page says work is delivering and selling. Who could tell me right here what this person's job is? If you said that that person is a mail carrier or a postal worker, you are correct. That person delivers us the mail. We see them all over our community every day. This person right here is trying to sell jewelry or watches. And this gentleman who we saw earlier in the book, he's selling fruit from a fruit stand right on the corner. Um, you see each job here is different, but they offer something to you. Work is creating. Interesting, work is creating. So who could tell me, what does it show in these pictures here that shows them creating? What are they creating? If you said that this lady is creating music with her violin, you're correct. And if you said that this man right here is creating a painting, you are also correct. So anytime you're doing work or anytime you're doing art or singing or doing anything like that, you're creating. So anything you kind of do with your hands is a form of creating and building and fixing, right? So creating, let's go back. I'm gonna read that those two pages together. So it says work is creating and building and fixing. So all these things go hand in hand. You see this guy right here, he's building a, looks like he's building a tall building. He's uh, you know, moving the steel around. You also see a, a woman right here fixing the wheel on her bicycle. And then you see somebody, a construction worker, working on a machine and moving dirt all around. Okay, so you see all these people building, fixing, and creating. Some people make things, okay? Some people make things. You can see right there, this person who reminds me of the story, building with dad. So now I'm thinking, I'm making a text-to-text -text connection, text-to-text, -text, right? And I'm making a connection because I saw a welder in the story, building with dad. When he was building the school, we saw a welder right? This gentleman is using a hammer and this person is sewing. So they're all making things for other people. Okay. Some people grow things or cook the food that we eat. So in this page, you'll see people um, making food, growing it. And in Pizza at Sally's, what did, what was she growing in her yard or growing near her store? Who could tell me what she was growing? If you said that she was growing tomatoes, you are correct. That's what she was growing. And she was using the tomatoes to make her pizza. And there is actually a person here making pizza themselves. So it's very cool to make another connection. Okay. Some work in an office and some work at home. So right now, boys and girls, I'm working at home, but I'm still teaching, but I'm at home, right? So we see this person right here, doing art, working on a car in their driveway, cleaning their house, okay? And then this person is working in an office. Others work outside. So I see a person on a lawnmower mowing all the grass and this woman is, she has two lobsters in her hand so she probably works in a, in a seafood place where there's fish and lobsters and different things like that. Or travel from place to place. So when I look at this picture, I wonder who could tell me what this man and this woman are doing? What is their job? What is they, What do they do for work? If you said that this man was a conductor on a train, you are correct. And if you said that this woman is a school bus driver, you are also correct. They are both traveling from place to place and their job, their job involves them driving people from one spot to another. Some work to earn money or volunteer because they are needed. So I know that this word, so you see this person is a dog walker, this person is a painter. Now when I see the word volunteer, hmm, who thinks they know, this is a tough one, who thinks they know what the word volunteer means? I'll give you a minute to think about that. What does volunteer mean? It's This page said, some people work to earn money or volunteer. Hmm. So I know 
that if I don't know what the word volunteer means, I know that I can go back here. This said some people work to earn money. So a volunteer must be somebody who works but doesn't earn money. That is somebody who's doing it just to help. Just like we have somebody right here helping a student. We have a woman pushing another woman in a wheelchair, helping her out, and then a crossing guard. So these are volunteers. They are doing something nice to help somebody, but they're not being paid for it, okay? Sometimes it is good to volunteer. Sometimes work is just a hobby or just for fun. So a hobby, hmm, a hobby is something that they do just for fun. What is something that you guys do for fun? I know something that I do for fun. I like to watch movies. I also like to play video games. So those are some things that I like to do to have fun. Sometimes I also like to play basketball as well. So you could see right here, this gentleman is building something. He's building a box. That's his hobby. Playing an instrument. That's another hobby. This person is uh, refereeing or playing soccer on the soccer field. Children work too. So you could see all these children working here. So I'm going to ask you, what is something that, how do you guys work? How do, how do, the, how do you scholars work? What is something that you do for work? And it doesn't necessarily have to be something that you do in school or at home. It could be something else. What is it that you do for work? Very good. Thank you. Even animals work, right? So we have animals that are like a horse pulls that carriage around. We have this dog who's a seeing eye dog. He's a service animal, which means um, this woman is actually blind, which means she can't see. So this dog will help her get around and keep her safe. The dog is very well trained, but there are animals that can offer services. And also they look at the uh, bee right here. The bee uh, works very, very hard to make honey and we eat the honey that they make. So they provide food for us to eat. And then it says, everybody works. How, what about you? Everybody works, what about you? So that's something that I want you to think of and I will see you tomorrow. And remember, think about it. Everybody works. What about you? What about you? Do you work? I don't know. But I know I will see you tomorrow. Bye.